Hi, everybody. It is I Am Still a Rose. It's time to talk about some very, very important things tonight. Um, I wanted to go right into International Women's Day. How nice to know that it is a Women's Nash International Women's Day. I think that is awesome that they celebrate us worldwide. And um, I didn't hear about it at where I work, but it's uh, when you look online, it's everybody was celebrating it. Uh, pretty much all the corporations and all the places all over the world. The president's wife spoke. Uh, Michelle Obama spoke. So it's a big thing. Hi, everybody. Um, tonight, I wanted to talk first about Me Too. That movement is going very, very big to the point where they're, they're bringing down some major, major folks as a result of coming together, speaking about it, and actually sharing their stories. And as a result of sharing their stories, some people are going down for what they did. They're losing their jobs. I, I don't understand why, why people think it's okay to harm people in a sexual matter and at a workplace. But it appears so many, so many women have experienced that. They, um, um, women such as Tarana Burke, Gwyneth Paltrow, Ashley Judd, even the one of my favorite uh, stars, Jennifer Lawrence. And these people are coming forward and they're, they're saying no more. And that's what I don't understand. We as women, we're afraid of stepping forward to share our stories for fear of repercussion, for fear of losing a job, for fear of embarrassment, Whatever the fear, it's 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 to the point where I don't I don't understand it because we're losing we're 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 a lot of women are being harmed by this and, and, and it's just getting worse. But at least we're coming forward. So that's what I wanted to go over today about five characteristics of coming forward, doing something and what you need in your life to take that first step and empowerment. After I go through these five steps, I wanted to go back to domestic violence because of something I saw this evening that really disturbed me. But I wanted, I'm going to stay on my topics first and then I'm going to go transfer over to what's the most important thing tonight. But empowering, empowerment, it's a process to become stronger, uh, to become confident, to take a chance, take a first step. Uh, it's usually because someone has made you feel that you can take that first step. So that's when empowerment comes on. So I would suggest being around strong people, being around like-minded people who want to grow, being around people who in, make you feel confident enough to take a chance and do something different outside of your box, outside of your comfort zone. Um, that, that, that's empowering. And then the confidence. That's when you rely on someone or something. And, but to rely on someone, you have to trust them. And you have to have faith. And you have to have, there has to be some credence somewhere. And you have to be able to feel like it can be done. So that's where the confidence comes in. Uh, but I, I, with the confidence part, I try not to focus on depending on a person. I, my focus would be to depend on God and to ask God to help me with that. And because man, 
they, God says, man, don't trust man, trust him. And if you put your reliance on a, a human being and you be let down, that can really destroy your confidence. And then there's balance. Um, the balance itself, you have to have some balance in your life because if you're all over the place, you don't know where to go because you're, you, you, you're too much at work or you're too much at home and your work is suffering. You don't go to church because you're exhausted from working too hard. All of those items with as far as balancing, you got to learn there's a you you got to learn that you got to work a certain period of time. You have to spend time with your family a period of time. You have to spend time with God a period of time as much as you can. But there has to be a balance. If you notice that you've done too much at work and your home life is falling apart, there's no balance. So that affects your mental stability because if you're all over the place and there's no structure and you're not balancing your time, then that's when some bad things can happen. You can have a nervous breakdown. And I'm I'm talking from experience where I was overdoing it. Hey, Debbie. Hey, William. JT, TJ. Hey, John. Hey, Michael. Um, you got to have that balance. You, you can't, you can't do the things that you want to do if there's no structure. <coughs> Excuse me. You have to have that structure in your life. You got to know what you want to do. You got to know you can't work 15 hours a day. And then come home and, and spend time with your family and, and not be exhausted. You can't spend too much time at work where you don't even have time to go home and go to sleep. And then you can't go to church. You can't spend time with your friends. And you got to balance it so that you can have time to spend with your friends outside of your family, outside of work. Outside of church, you have to make some time to be with people that you love and care about and that you can share your intimate uh, conversations with. If you don't have that, it's not good. Courage, standing firm, believing in yourself, the ability to do something that you're afraid to do. The fact that you take a step, like those women in the Me Too, Me Too campaign, they took the first step. They said, no more, I'm tired of this. I, I wanna do something different with my life. I don't care what people think. I'm embarrassed, but so what? I gotta say it, and hopefully they'll do, somebody will do something about it. That took courage to do that. And and we ladies need courage. We need to be able to take a stand and not be afraid. And we need to know to speak up. A lot of times people at work, I hear it all the time. Oh, you're going to get in trouble if you say that. Oh, they're going to be mad at you. When I work my tail off and do my job and I do it to the best of my ability and you mean to tell me I can't speak my opinion, I can't tell you how I feel about something that you're doing that affects my job. Oh, no, 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 no. And I feel that those who be quiet and don't say anything, they either don't have passion in their jobs and what they do, or they just don't care. And are they afraid of the repercussions? And my parents didn't raise me to be afraid. So I take a chance and I have the courage to speak up. No, you don't have friends that way. You don't have bosses that like you, but I'm not going to work to be liked. I'm going to work to get a, get a job done. And liking comes about when they give me a promotion or something, but it's always stemming towards what I did for the job not whether or not somebody liked me or not. So I'm always taking that chance of of stepping up, saying what I have to say, not in a disrespectful way, just, hey, sir, uh, can you, because I work in a military environment, um, sir, I, can I say something here? Um, can I interject a thought here? But have the courage, have the courage to do that. It's nothing wrong with that. And then there is love. 
I want to get off of the business subjects and talk about love, how we need to know what love is. And if somebody tells you they love you, but you don't feel the love, there ain't no love. When someone loves you, you see it, you feel it, it's, you breathe it. It's nothing about love that should be questionable. You should know it when you see it. You should know it when you feel it. Um, and that stems, that goes, that love comment goes right into domestic violence. I don't know if you just saw, I was not talking about domestic violence tonight because it's International Women's Day. But women are the ones getting domestically abused. So I think I can talk about women and domestic violence tonight. But I talked about it last week. But my cousin sent me a picture of a woman tonight, an hour ago, and I just saw it of a woman's face battered to the point where she had to have eye surgery because her right eye was totally disfigured in front of, I believe, a set of twins and two sons and the fiance did this to her. Um, we, both, we all know that that's not love, right? Hi, 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 Miss Sandra. Hey, Alvin. We both, we all know that that is not love. If someone hurts you, if someone talks to you and berates you, curses you out, demeans you, say mean things to you, and then they physically attack you, that is not love. That is not love. I, I just got word of another friend her husband spit on her during an altercation. And then maybe two weeks later, when the bruises start healing, they'll call you and say, hey, but I love you. You know I love you. That's not love. Anytime a person puts their hands on you to harm you, or to say mean things to you, that is never love. That is never love. So out of all the things we talked about, I wanted to go back into domestic violence because domestic violence is killing us. It is harming our children. Once children grow up in a domestic violence family, a family that is victimized by domestic violence, they tend to repeat domestic violence. And then it's a, it's a repetitive circle. It's a vicious cycle where it just keeps going and going and going. And nobody can stop it until someone gets some help, either spiritual help or, or, or go to a hospital and our therapists and get some help in that fashion. But it, it just doesn't stop on its own. It doesn't stop on its own. And to see that young lady, a beautiful young lady who works in the hospital environment, probably got sent to the hospital where she works and her face is totally disfigured. So I don't know how she ended up being a friend of mine but I, I looked at her pictures and my take is it is the man in the picture that's with her and her children. And I hope he's in jail now because her face will never be the same. I'm not a doctor, but her eye was just, she had to go to surgery because of her eye being disfigured. And I guarantee you, this man is going, well, he, I can't call him a man, but this, 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 I guess I can't call him a human. I don't, I guess a monster, this monster will be calling on her very soon because that's how they operate to say, I love you. 
I need you back in my life. I'm sorry I did what I did. You didn't deserve that. I don't know what's wrong with me, but I want you to know that I love you. That, my friends, is not love. Anytime a person harms you physically or mentally, emotionally, they do not love you. And we have a tendency to not understand what love is. Love you can feel. Love is not a noun. And a noun is when somebody is speaking love. Baby, I love you. Oh, you know I love you. You know you're the only one for me. Oh, he just told me he loved me. But lady... He hasn't indicated he loved you. Where is the illustration in this? If he loves you, why don't you feel the love? Oh, yeah, you heard him say he loves you. But he never told you by way of showing you. Actions. I know you've heard this because I've heard it as a little girl. Actions speak louder than words. Oh, those, that sound is so dear to me now after going through the things that I've gone through in my life that I've written about and the little girl inside and that book, I Am Still a Rose. You guys are going to read that probably two times and you're going to share it with all your girlfriends because in that story, I talk about that. The, the charming guys, the ones that tell you everything you want to hear. That's why it's important for fathers to be in their daughter's lives and tell them how he feels about his daughters. I love you. You're my beauty. You're my princess. Um, I, no boy is going to ever have to be with you because I, I'm going to beat him up because you are my lady. I will always love you. I will always take care of you. Little girls need to hear that as early as three years of age. They need to hear that. Unfortunately, fathers are too busy moving on, meeting new women, starting new families, and forget about the first families that they had. And these little children grow up without their dads, and they grow up without that true love. So when they hear it, it's got to be real, but it's not real. But they don't know true love because their fathers didn't provide it to them. So it's imperative that the fathers today, the absent fathers, please, I'm only talking about the absent fathers. They need to step up their game and start being very, very involved in their daughter's lives and their son's lives so that they can get the love that they need so that they can hear the flirting. Do you know fathers flirt with their daughters? Hey, pretty girl, where are you going with them shorts on? Uh-uh, you better come back in here and change. They need to hear that today so that when they turn 17 and 18, mm-mm. You can't gain them because their father has been in their lives. Their father has showered them with those gifts. So those gifts won't make them. Do you know there are some women that end up getting pimped out because they started getting gifts from men? They didn't know that these men had no interest in them as far as loving them, but they didn't know. They had never been showered with gifts before. So these men, these prowlers, start showering these young girls, these young cute girls with gifts, start buying them makeup, start doing their hair, start buying them all these fancy slash sexy clothes. Next thing you know, they, they, they show them a little love. They teach them a little love, the physical love in their mindset is love, then they throw them out on the streets. But that's because fathers aren't involved. There are fathers out here that don't show their children the love that they need so that this won't happen to them. 
Because this little girl tonight, this young woman that I saw that's been brutally attacked in her face, no telling what her body looks like, but her face is totally ruined. And if you see her pictures on her Facebook page, she's a beautiful young lady. Her eye is disfigured. She had to have surgery. She cannot see out of one of her eyes because some man took the liberty to damage her physically and I'm sure mentally and in front of their children. So that's not love. And I guarantee you this man is going to contact her and tell her in a few weeks, I love you. I need you back in my life. Yeah, he needs enough. He needs a punching bag back in his life. He's going to do it again because that's all he knows. And you kind of have to wonder why did he do that? What kind of upbringing did he have? He's about, he looks like he's about four feet tall. So he probably has a, a, a superiority complex, but he damaged that woman. He disfigured her. So, you know, she's going to have some mental issues behind that kind of beating. She's going to have some mental issues. She's going to have some um, issues with her self-esteem, all those items I talked about earlier, uh, confidence, courage. She doesn't know what love is. And, and if she doesn't heal from this experience, guess what? It gets repeated. She'll find another abuser. And that's why it's important for young men out here, old men, don't care what age you are. If you have little girls out here, love them, shower them with love. I have Eric Robinson on here, a prime example of a father. He's always there for his little girls and he's loving them so much that I guarantee you 95% guarantee can't do 100%, but I guarantee you he's primed them to know what love is. And guess what? He shows love to their mom. So no way in hell, I might have to add, that they will even, they will see a bad guy coming down the road. The bad guy will see that good woman that that man has raised and he will turn the other way. And go find the one who he can sense did not have the training, did not have the love from her family. So that is the one he will exploit. He will exploit that one. I told my father as a young girl, I was in my early 20s. I said, Dad, you should have spent more time with me and Sherry. I said, you should have shown us love. He raised four, he had four daughters. But he did not raise them the way that he should have raised them. He was always, he was either in Vietnam, Korean War, then he went to Fort Bragg, then he went to Germany. The man was all over the place. But he never had time for his daughters. So then we grew up. When a father is not around for their children, they look for that father. My my, I got a sister who likes men 20, 30 years her senior you know what that means? She looking for a daddy. She is looking for a daddy. She's not attracted to the older man. She's attracted to a daddy figure. That comes from not having a father figure to raise you, to love you, to shower you with everything a little girl should have. And when you don't do that, you raise them to become needy desperate, doing everything imaginable, but what they should be doing. And those prowlers, those that put their fists in women's faces, they see them coming, they smell them coming, and they go and exploit. It's like the devil finding his prey. And they use and abuse these women. These beautiful creatures, they abuse them. And it is all because, all because they did not have the knowledge 
No one pull them to the side and say, you have to love yourself first. And daddy loves you. Daddy's going to take care of you. Daddy will, no, no man will take care of you like daddy. He will spoil her. He will let her know day in, day out, you mean the world to me. He will show the babies, the girl's mom, how much he loves her. So when she gets out in the real world, oh my gosh, nothing can stop her. Hey, cousin, low self-esteem, it starts so early in life. And we have to watch our little girls. I have a cousin who she used to make me sick. Her name is Vicky. She only made me sick is because her father adored her. God bless him, Uncle Rudy. He adored her. He would look at her. He looked at her so lovingly till we were jealous and say, oh, well, why are you looking at her like that? What's, what's up with him? Oh, do, does he like her in the wrong way? No, he didn't. He adored his baby girl. He showered her with everything she wanted. She wrecked his Mercedes one day, and we were so happy, me and my other cousins, because we said, she going to get a whip in today. I bet he ain't going to love her today. He said, Vicky, are you okay? He didn't even go look at the Mercedes. So I saw her at her mother's funeral, my Aunt Lynette's funeral. She's with her husband. Every time I saw her, he is looking for her to console her, make sure she's okay. He was pampering her. He was loving on her. He was making sure there was no issues surrounding her. She was 100% protected so much, I couldn't get to her hardly to hug her myself and say, I'm sorry. I did it as closely as I could to get my own physical hug because he had her the whole time because she was raised that way. She would have it no other way. These are her expectations because she was raised to have high expectations of the man in her life. If you are not, you will not do that kind of thing when you are in a relationship. You'll have lower expectations. You'll make excuses for somebody cursing you out. You'll make excuses for somebody embarrassing you in public. You'll make excuses for him hitting you once or shoving you because that's how it starts. You will make all types of excuses because guess what? You don't know any better. You don't know. You had no role models. You had no mentors. You had nobody that held you throughout your, your childhood to say, this is how it's supposed to be. And men who don't have children, go out and find somebody that you can mentor. Alvin is on the line. Alvin does a good job of reaching out to children, boys at his church who don't have a father. That's what we need to do, man. We need to do it with the boys. You know, we need to do it with the girls because we're losing this generation that's coming up behind the baby boomers. We're losing them. This young girl has to be 35 at the most. And I don't even think she's 35, but I look at her now and her face is all bruised. She looks like she's 55 and she's damaged for life. Because this man has ripped her face apart. And I thank you, Cousin Jackie, for showing that to me. Because you, you changed my whole topic tonight. It was going to be y'all, y'all, y'all about the International Women's Day. But we have so much work to do. We have so much work to do for our race, our sex, our gender, these women. And we wonder why they cross over. That's another subject. We wonder why they go into another lane that we knew nothing about and our, 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 at least no one talked about it. And now it's open. It's a big thing now. It's, you can be in the movies and see them all together. What, why did that happen and where did it happen? And when did it happen? We have a responsibility to this generation 
And to see that baby's face all, 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 all jacked up, probably permanent bruises and forget the physical bruises. Just think of what she and her, her, her children are going to be going through for the rest of their lives. The fact that they saw this woman, she said she was almost killed. Those words are haunting me as I speak. She was almost killed. And we wonder every day why the world is the way it is. We don't look out for each other. We don't step up. I reached out to that young lady. I said, whatever you need, you, you text me, you call me. But I said, you leave him alone. Don't ever call him a fiance again because a man that is about to marry you should never put his hands on you. He should never call you out your name. He should never beat you to the extent that he is killing you. And then all of your children are witnessing that. I don't know if they're his kids, her kids, their kids. It doesn't matter. Children witness that. So let me tell you what the children are going to do. If they don't get some mental help, they're going to grow up repeating the cycle. That's what my second, the little girl inside, I'm sorry, I'm all off track. I am still a rose is about, it starts out about domestic violence. My mom's going to kill me, but I had to talk about it. Because as four little girls, none of us got therapy behind that. And I don't, for the grace of God, being surrounded by prayer warriors, I I am blessed that I have never had anybody strike me. Uh, the Tanya that I know would strike back and we would be fighting and it would be some Tina, I can Tina Turner stuff going on. But I witnessed that. I witnessed the same thing her children went through. But back when I was growing up, there is no such thing as therapy. I, at least in the in the black families, they didn't have the money or it was just never done. Um, so I ask you, I plead to everyone online and whoever listens to this to help somebody. If you know there's a young lady in your life or somewhere in your in your where you can in, within your reach and you know there's no man in her life and you know she's headed down a wrong direction, you can you can sense it. Please reach out. These these young ladies need our help. Everyone doesn't have the luxury. We can live in our houses. We can drive our nice cars. We can be living good. Don't close an eye to what's going out in the real world that's right outside your door. Reach out, help anybody that you can. If you don't have any children, that's a big blessing that you're able to do something and then go back home and have your freedom again. But it doesn't give you a get out of jail free card because you don't have a child. It should, it should, it should, it should encourage you just for that sake alone that you don't have that day in day out responsibility to reach out to help somebody just to help somebody. Because these men who don't mean women any good are prowlers. They're out there to kill, steal, and destroy our baby girls. Put them out on the street. They love little girls that are wayward, upset with their moms, um, um, out, almost, out, almost uh, running away, or on the telephone talking about how their parents are treating them. Oh, those are the ones they really want to go after because the kids are already mad at their families. They have no idea that these men are getting ready to put them out on the streets. They don't know that. And I can look at my sisters today and I feel that things would be a lot differently if they didn't witness what we witnessed when we were just five, 12, four, and seven. That was something that'll stay with me forever. 
So I, I can only imagine what this young lady went through and I can only imagine what her children went through. And you know what? My mom, she, I think after that happened, she tucked it away. She never dealt with it. She never talks about it. My father, he's deceased now. He never talked about it. They tucked it away. It was like a family secret. But abuse is no joke. Abuse is painful. Abuse is long lasting. And we have to do something about it. Because it's not getting better. It's getting worse. I've decided I'm going to write a book about domestic violence. But I'm not going to write the book. I'm going to get 10 women to tell me their stories. And I'm going to publish it. And I'm going to get those 10 women to talk about it. And help other women so we can help close this door to this. Um, we got to stop it. I don't care if we pass it out like pamphlets for free. I don't care. It's a, it's a matter of somebody got to do something about it. And this woman is a hero, a shero, in my opinion, because she took pictures of her face and posted it on, on Facebook. And she has over a million hits already. A lot of people are saying things like, oh, I'm, a pr I'm praying for you. Uh -uh. A lot of times people say that. Do you know they're not praying? I would be afraid to say that and not follow through because God is seeing you. He's watching you lie and say, I'm praying for you. Or one lady just said praying. So insensitive. We've seen so much jacked up stuff on television to we have become desensitized about stuff that we see. And that's shameful in itself. That that's shameful. But I'm 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 encouraging everybody to reach out and help whoever they can. And I'm going to go through every social media situation or every social media um, uh, platform that I have. And I'm going to find 10 women that will share their stories with me. And I'm going to talk about it. And I'm going to talk about it till I'm blue in the face. And I won't be blue in the face from somebody hitting me in my face. I'm going to be blue in the face where I'm going to do it till death do does me part. Because something has to be done. I I witnessed it as early as 50, 53 years, 50, no, 50 years ago. I got to do the math better. 50 years ago. I must have been five years old. I might have been four. But I saw it. And I remember it like it was yesterday. Enough is enough. Men, love, keep loving on your little girls. Men who don't have little girls, find a little girl that you can help. Support the little boys too so that they will know how to respect women. Because if men were in their lives, they wouldn't have the nerve to hit a woman. Do you know if my 35-year-old son hits his wife, I'm going over there to beat his... Mm, I will fight him personally myself Tonight, if she calls me and says he touched her in her face or he pushed her or he hit her or he called her a B, I'm over there. I'm on it because I've taught my boys they better not ever put their hands on a woman. And my son is 35 years old and my youngest is 12. I don't play that. I don't play that. So where are the men in where are the men in these young men's lives and these older men's lives where th that's acceptable? I know back in our day it was it was a secret. It happened. The women looked the other way and the men just continued to do their thing and and beat the women in their lives and it was a family secret. But today too? Come on. We don't keep secrets. We have too much social media stuff going on. Why is this happening today worse than it was happening last the years ago? What's up with that? Come on, you guys. We got to do better. We got to do better. And and Eric, thank you for being such a role model with your babies. I have always admired you. 
And I've always been proud of you as a young man and what I've seen and how you have helped me with my girls as well. You were there for them as well. Thanks to you and your wife, they know about God more than I did. And because of what you taught them, that encouraged me to be taught. So you guys keep doing what you're doing because you're going to always be immensely blessed because of the foundation that you've laid for your family. And 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 Jackie, I'm, I'm, I'm honored that you shared your story with me last week. We got to do some things in the future because... We got to help these women understand that domestic violence is not cute. Domestic violence is not faddish. D domestic violence is deadly. Do you know domestic violence is so bad that after the man gets tired of beating up on you, he will, he will take your kid down? He will kill your kid? That's some serious stuff. You know, your bruises heal. But what about the next time he's so angry because you threatening to leave him? He's going to show you, oh, you're going to leave me? I'm going to make your life miserable. They don't, then they know that you you busy taking the pain. So guess what? They want, since you have gotten yourself so conditioned to being hurt by him, they go to your love nest, your babies. Because that's how they know they can get you the worst way. By har harming your children. So we have work to do. We got to help these sisters understand what love truly is. Going back to my original point. Love is not pain. Love is not pain in no way. Love is an action verb. It is not a noun where somebody's rapping to you, telling you all the things they're going to do to you, be, do for you and do with you. It's not about that. It's about showing you what love is. So I want to say thank you tonight. Hey, Peggy. I want to say thank you for being here tonight. Please share this to anyone you know that's going through domestic violence. I'm going to do whatever I can. This has this has taken my whole platform in another area, and I guess God wants me to do it. This is not what I had intended on doing, but um, I feel tonight I'm compelled. And like I said, I have never experienced this, and I don't want to say knock on wood or anything. I'm, I'm claiming that. Better not a man ever think about doing that. But at the same token... It has been, it has driven me. I haven't had sleepless nights since last Thursday when we talked about domestic violence. And I was supposed to be talking about International Women's Day and talking about empowerment, confidence, balance, courage, love. And then, and then I saw that picture and I'm like, whoa, whoa, we have to make some changes. We have to do something. So please. I encourage you to help others, help other women, whoever else you see. Hey, Tammy, whoever you can help, help, because domestic violence is killing our people. It's killing them mentally, it's killing them physically, and it's killing them spiritually. I don't know what's going on with the churches. I don't ever hear us talking about domestic violence. We do the domestic violence month, but domestic violence happens outside of one month. It's not a fad. It's not something where you wear purple shirts for a month and you're done with it and you forget about it. Domestic violence is here every day, every hour, every minute somebody is getting hurt. We got to do a better job. This lady is ruined. So I want to thank you. Thank you so much. And, um, oh, thank you, Tammy. Thank you, Tammy. I'm glad you love the book. I, I hope to see you all next Thursday. And I uh, have no idea what we're going to talk about. Probably some more domestic violence. Uh, my cousin, Jackie, she doesn't know it, but we, we're going to be working this. 
And um, I felt compelled. It's amazing how God works when you're obedient, when you just be still enough to listen. And he's he's got me over here doing a robot because I'm in one area and 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 I'm saying I'm going to do this. I've written down every, my subjects and my subject matter. And here he comes. Uh-uh, no, you're not. We're going to do this. And I'm I'm like, whoa, wait, but I didn't, uh-uh. And I can't, I'm not even a victim of that per se, but guess what? I was a victim. Okay, Peggy, I'll, I'll let you know the information. I was a victim. It was emotionally. It was emotionally. It was spiritually. That gentleman that I thought was a gentleman, he knew every scripture in the Bible but he was the worst spouse a woman could have. And he left me with a child and he's nowhere around. So I have been victimized, just not physically, but emotionally and spiritually, I have been victimized. So all I want to stress ladies is don't be victimized. We gotta love ourselves. We got to be, be, we have to be in tune to who we are around. Th thank you, emotional and verbal abuse. That's the worst. Because the, the physical abuse, it heals. But when it's here, that stuff haunts you forever. What I experienced as a little girl that will be in my next book that should be out soon, um, I'm Still a Rose, in spite of, all that stuff stays with you forever. I was a little girl. But I'm telling you, in, in domestic violence is no joke. And women, when you hear those warning signs, when you hear those warning signs, you got to step back. You got to act on what you hear and what you feel and 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 deal with it accordingly because Women are being abused. They're being exploited. They're being exploited. I got friends now who are older than me who are being exploited. You know? Men trying to use them. I got girlfriends that I grew up with since, since uh, um, um, nursery school. Exploitation. And if they see us being a victim, and, and all, when I did the math, most of these women that I'm talking about didn't have their fathers in their lives. They didn't have the men in their lives to help them, to, to encourage them, to watch over them, to, to flirt with them, to make them feel special, to gift them so that they're accustomed to getting gifts. And as I said earlier, men who don't mean you any good can shower you with gifts, prime you by taking you to the hairdresser, doing everything to beautify you, and you think you got the king and or the prince, and he's getting ready to put you out on the street. He's getting ready to pimp you off. He had no interest in you for him. He had an interest in, in, in marketing you for his own goods, for his own sake. So we got a job to do. I'm for it. If anybody else wants to be for it, if anybody else has a story that they've been there, done that, let me know because that's going to, all the things I had to do, I decided I'm putting it to the side. I want to focus on domestic violence. And like I said, it's not, it's not me to that extent, but it's a part of me because I had experience. I had witnessed it in my life as a little girl and I've experienced it from the emotional and spiritual side. And one is just as bad as the other. So I thank you all for, hello, Oscar. I thank you all for being there tonight. Um, this is a very dear topic to me. I don't know what happened, but it just slapped the heck out of me. Was not my focus. My focus was focusing on moving beyond the pain. I am still a rose in spite of. 
moving beyond the pain, moving beyond so that you can grow. Because if we don't fix what's broken, we'll continue to be in broken relationships because brokenness gets be God's brokenness. So that's why it's important to be fixed. Get the therapy, read positive things. Thank you. Read positive things, whatever you need to do to fix you. Because it's okay to be broken as long as you know you're broken and you're doing something about it. I myself felt very broken and I did everything in my power to work on being broken so that I can be fixed. I mean, and we're all fixable. We're never broken to the point where we can't be fixed. But the, but the focus is we need to, thank you, Peggy. We need to be fixed. I know so many women who are who are in the game. And I'm thinking, did I just hear this right? Did she just say, does she know that man is not sincere? And I don't know if God gave me this awesome discernment overnight. I wish he had given it to me 20 years ago, but I probably wouldn't have appreciated it then. But I got it now. And I can see him. I can smell him. I can see them in the stores. I can see them at the malls. I can see them from afar, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I would like to help women understand that we all have that power within us. But it comes with being powerful here first. And if we don't have it fixed here, we're going to attract nothing but brokenness. Because like I said, brokenness begots brokenness. And we don't want broke. We don't want anything broke in our lives. We don't want our pocket broke. We don't want us broke mentally. We don't want us broke in the spirit. We want to be right. We want to have it so good here that we don't have anything to worry about but getting what we deserve. You know, uh, beauty for our ashes, that's what we should be focusing on. You stay, you know, I hear people say, oh, it's a bad day. Oh, I hate this day. I can't wait till tomorrow. Maybe it'll be better. Move that attitude out of your life and start thinking positive about yourself. Because I'm telling you, if you are so collect connected here, they will make a U-turn. They will make a U-turn the moment they see you. And, and I used to feel like, oh, wow, nobody's going to love me. I'm going to be by myself. Uh, why is everybody running from me? Why is people being mean to me at work? Why are people being distant to me? Why, why don't I have all those friends I used to have? Because I'm not broken anymore. I am not broken. I recognize the pain. I recognize everything that I had been experiencing in life. I recognize the me being attracted to the wrong people in my life. Girls and men and men and women. And as a result of finally recognizing it, they're gone. They disappeared. They're gone. They don't want any parts of me. And I used to feel lonely about it, but then I realized I was becoming more stronger. It became, it gave me strength. And guess what? When you get that strength, you start meeting different kinds of people stronger people, maybe stronger than you. So that makes you go in this direction. You're going upward. You're making some advancement in your life versus going downward. When you're meeting more of nothing, brokenness be God's brokenness. Don't ever forget that. So my thing on this, hey, Sean, that's Brookie's husband. Um, um, you got to, you got to manage your life, you don't have but one. And if you know anybody going through domestic violence, tell them to hit me up, please. Hit me up on IamStillARose.com. Hit me up on Messenger. Ask them to befriend me. I will befriend them. 
Um, I will do whatever I can to help them get resources that they need. I will talk to them. I will mentor them. I will do whatever I can because I don't know why they are, they got me now. They got me totally plugged in and, and I, I just want to be there to help as any way that I can. Uh, I thank you all for being here tonight and don't forget what I said that, we got to stick together. We got to help one another. Men, reach out to these young ladies. Help if, if mentor a young girl that you know doesn't have a father in her life so that she won't go down the wrong direction. And, and take and mentor these young men so that they won't put their hands on a woman. Somebody needs to teach them that that is not how we do business. They are not supposed to be putting their hands on women. We have to teach these this young generation to respect one another. We got to teach them that this is not how we do things. You all got to look on my Facebook page and see how that woman's face is destroyed. The, the man didn't just stop at one time and say, oh my God, look what I did. He beat her till I guess the cops came because she almost died. You think one time wasn't enough and he, he had a second notion where I don't think I should be doing this. Oh my gosh, God forgive me. No, he kept beating her. He kept hitting her in her face. Something's got to stop. This doesn't make any sense. What gave him the right? What made him so angry that he thought it was okay to destroy this woman, disfigure her? She is had to get surgery in her eye because it is damaged. She can't see out of it. He did this in front of all her children. His children, I don't know whose children they are. They, she, she said he did this in front of the kids. She put it on Facebook for the world to see. She's already got over a million hits. So we got to do what we can to help each other. Domestic violence is no joke. And I was not going in that direction. My direction was healing. But obviously some sisters need me in another direction. So again, please share this with your domestic violence uh, friends because everybody's got somebody. Everybody's been turning the other cheek, making it none of their business. But it is your business if you know somebody getting hurt and you're not doing anything about it. It is your business. And ladies, we got to stop that. Please. So... I thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, hey there. My co-author's on the line, Yolanda. Y'all y'all need to reach out to her. This lady is an awesome prayer 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 warrior. She can help you through everything. I'm going to learn so much from her, but I tell you tonight, help each other. We got to help these sisters. Pray for this young lady. Reach out to her. Send her a personal message. Not saying I'm praying for you because like I said, who does? Who really is praying when they say that? At least put the prayer in the message. But don't just say praying. Come on, you guys. Be more sensitive. But I thank you guys. Peggy, thank you so much. Good night. Um, I love you guys. Thank you, Sister Yolanda, my co-author. Um... We, we have an awesome book out, uh, pray, uh, 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 gosh, what's the name of our book, Yolanda? Um, I got it right here. It's, it's called sharing our prayers, powerful, powerful testimonies. Um, 12, 11 author, 12 authors, 12 testimonies, tremendous. Um, and you can get it online. I'll send the information out tonight. Um, you guys, we got to work together. We got to love each other. We got to stop this pain. We got to stop the abuse. We got to care about each other. This is International Women's Day. It's about loving one another. Don't, don't stand there and act like you don't see it and you know you see it. If you see something, say something, please. 
Thank you very much tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I got it. I put it up here for everybody. 12 testimonies of victory. That's right. We're winners. We went through some stuff. We got through it. And women, those women is getting abused. We gonna get through this too. You know, we gonna get through it. But you gotta deal with this because we don't want any more brokenness. Because brokenness attracts more brokenness. We have to heal. When you heal, you get somebody else that's healed. You don't have anybody that's broken when you all, all worked up. When you got it all together here, you don't even attract that mess. It, 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 it runs from you. The devil runs from somebody who's got Jesus in them, who's cleansed from all of that evil spirit, all of that, all that demonic stuff that's going on, all that pain, all that unforgiveness. The, you don't, when, when all this is healed, you don't attract those kind of people. You don't attract somebody who wants to bust your face in. It just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. So we got to work together to save these women. I've seen too much abuse. I've seen too much and we got to do something about it. I love you all. Thank you, Yolanda. Peggy, thank you. You'll get them. I'll, put, I'll, I'll send you the website. All righty. Peace. I am still a rose in spite of. I want y'all to learn that phrase. No matter what you're going through, the boss making you mad, uh, the, the, the man is about to hit you. You say that and follow up with some scripture. He, he going to turn around or just say, Jesus, Jesus. Don't nobody want to hear that who means you harm. No one wants to hear the name Jesus if they mean you harm. They can't deal with that because that's goodness. That's goodness. Thank you. You guys go to bed. All righty. I appreciate your time. I'll see you next time. Don't forget brokenness be God's brokenness. Good night. Good night, Michael.